I'm here today to tell you about something that, when I was 10 years old, I would have thought was amazing. My name's Steve Messler, and along with my sister, I co-founded an organization that connects Olympians and Paralympians with underserved school kids all over my home country, the US, in order to increase their level of Olympism as well as digital literacy. We're connecting them via communications technology. Now, Olympism is a big fancy word the Olympic world likes to use for the things it takes to be an Olympian. Goal setting, perseverance, uh, determination, those kind of things. I should also mention, as already mentioned, that I myself am a three-time Olympian. And I'm a world champion as well as an Olympic gold medalist. And growing up, my heroes were Olympians like Dan O'Brien, who in 1992, who in 1992 went on to, <laughs> in 1992 he, he was the best decathlete in the world. And he went on to not make the Olympic team because he no-heighted in the pole vault. I learned a lesson really quickly that three months later, he went on to break the world record. He didn't let that, that stumble slow him down. Four years later, my family and I were sitting in the Olympic Stadium in 1996 in Atlanta, and we watched him win his Olympic gold medal. I can remember sitting there with my younger sister. Look at how serious I look in that right there. <laughs> I can remember sitting there with my younger sister as we chased down our Olympic heroes. We, we tried to find them, we tried to take pictures with them, we tried to touch our heroes. What would it have been like to be able to, to be able to touch our heroes, to be able to communicate with our heroes when we are young? It's an amazing world that we live in right now. Heroes shape our world. Positive role models shape what's happening. And at the same time, the internet, we all know in this room, the internet and social media are reshaping the way that the world works. Government structures, the entire world is being reshaped by our youth. The Arab Spring is just one example of how powerful this new medium is. I'm here to talk to you about a new way to connect our heroes using that brand new medium with the school kids that need it the most. All right, but first I'm gonna step back and I'm gonna start with some concerning data from my home country. In 2010, Gallup, which is a massive polling agency in the US, did a national survey and they showed that two thirds of American students, grades five to 12, are considered not ready for the future. Almost half are sitting in school stuck or discouraged. 35% can't find ways around the problems they're put in front of them. And 42%, only 42% energetically pursue their goals. When I look at this, these are the things that Olympians, this is what we dominated at. This is what we do. And that's the amazing thing to me, and, and we're, gonna, we're gonna take one more step further here, because these are very big numbers. These are very big, broad strokes. We'll go a little bit closer to home to what we can actually affect. In the early 90s, Jonathan Crane did a study. And what he did was really interesting. He looked at the relationship between role models and how they affect their community. When you look at a community that has 40% role models, within it, so high status uh, workers as judged by the US Census Bureau. There's a very low dropout rate. Well, when you, when you decrease that number to only 5.6, you get a modest raise, a modest raise in the dropout rate in schools. The amazing part is when you go from 5.6% down to 3.4%, you know what happens? The dropout rate more than doubles. Those last few role models within a community, within the community that needs it, are the most important people. And that's, that's where we come into play on this. Now, I've got a friend, friend who lives in Nairobi, Kenya, and his, his comment is that poverty isn't, isn't the twisted metal of the slum dwelling. It is in the repetitive, dysfunctional behavior of the violence children who are never exposed to anything better live with every day. We don't know any better until we have heroes. That's the coolest thing. We don't know any better until we see somebody out there do it. Do you get that? That's the power of where this kind of idea comes in, where we can connect our Olympians from anywhere using the communications technology that we have right now. All right, that's where an idea like this, where Classroom Champions, which is what this organization is called, this is where this comes into play. What we're doing is we're connecting Olympians and Paralympians, and monthly they're communicating with high-need school kids around the country, around my country. All right, they're, they're working on goal setting. They're having monthly conversations. They're sending video messages back and forth. They're having live chats, they're answering blogs, all because the power of what's happening with the social media and the medium that they can use right now. All right, that's, that's what we're talking about. We are in 
28 classrooms in 20 countries, in 20 cities around the country, we've been around for one year. This is something we started when I was an athlete. So just one year in, we're able to affect, we're able to affect this many kids. We're working with classrooms that are 50% or more high need by US government standards. High need by US government standards means that families of four who receive a certain amount, who only earn a certain amount of income, and these kids are eligible to receive free or reduced price lunches. So the, the kids that need it the most, that's where we're, that's where we're impacting. It's, it's such a fun thing for me, able to be, for me to be able to do. Now, the, what happens past this is that, I want you to think of, it as, think of it like this. This is a Big Brothers Big Sisters meets 21st century pen paling Olympians. And that's what we're able to do, and that's what we're able to do right now. I would have thought that was the coolest thing when I was this, when I was this age. All right, this is a really, really big idea. We have the impact, we have the, the ability to impact and affect so many kids this way. All right, how are we making that happen? We're, we're connecting volunteers via WebEx. We're finding skilled labor on micro-volunteering sites, and we're following athletes on Twitter. Yes, Twitter. And we're following these athletes, and you'd be amazed <laughs> the personality characteristics you could find in somebody in 144 characters every day. I can't tell you, we found a, two of our athletes, two of the seven athletes that are in the program that are out there affecting, athlete, affecting kids, I found simply by fostering a relationship on Twitter. Three or four more, we followed and we decided that that personality wasn't the kind of match, wasn't the kind of match that we wanted to do. And then once we find these athletes, we're connecting them. But here's the thing, we're not connecting them in the paradigm that you and I know. Our paradigm is that live is better, in person is better. If we could have the choice to send a text message or show up at somebody's door to influence somebody, the choice would be easy, right? But what about kids now? What about kids today? How many of you here have, have children? Say teenagers even. All right. How many of you have walked into your living room and seen them text messaging with their best friend on the couch, right? Not that abnormal of a behavior, except for their best friend is on the other side of the couch with them. <laughs> and what do you do? What's your first instinct? Probably to yell at them, right? Open your mouth, make a noise, but they have a choice, and they choose digital. That's what they prefer. They would rather communicate in that way. Why wouldn't we take advantage of that? That's the question. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. We're going to use, we're going to use an example here of one of our athletes in the program. His name is David Oliver. David, I'm a, I'm a former track guy. All right, David is an Olympic, 2008 Olympic silver medalist in high hurdles, and he's an amazing athlete. David's athletes, the, the classrooms that we adopted for David are in New York City, Charlotte, North Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia, and Portland, Oregon. All right, big, huge, big, huge array there. Except for David lives in Orlando. That's a great picture, isn't it? He's going to be really happy that we used that picture. <laughs> David lives in Orlando, Florida. Orlando, Portland is a long way in my country. It's about as far as you get. Right? There's no way for us to send David back and forth. Now, if we want to do it in our paradigm, in order to send David to Portland to talk to these kids, it's going to take him 60 hours to get there, spend a day talking, and come back. He's going to have one conversation, and he's going to reach, even if he, even if he talks to the whole school, not just the classroom, he's going to maybe reach 400 kids, which is great. But you know what? You know how many more times he's ever going to see those kids? None. He'll see him one time and he'll go home and he'll go back to training. Meanwhile, he's lost three days of training of one of our best Olympic athletes on his road to London. With the digital model, that same 60-hour period, David could have sent 2,400 90-second videos. All right, so that's pretty much will encompass every single athlete that we could possibly think of in this program because our messages are short. They're not 10-minute lessons. They're 90 seconds. They're two minutes. They're three minutes. All right, and within that 2,400 messages, with this model, he could have affected an, an, an immeasurable amount of kids. An immeasurable amount of kids, because everything is open source. On our website are the videos, are the lesson plans that the teachers are collaborating and sharing with each other about their Olympian. All right, we're not, but here's the thing, is what happens on the ground? What would this digital relationship have? That's probably your next question. Here's something that we got from a teacher just last month talking about how powerful the program's been, talking about a student she had last year who was constantly suspended in trouble with viol for violence. He's so taken with being matched with David Oliver. It's turned his life around. His mom says it's all he talks about when he gets home. 
These kids just wanted to be, they just wanted to be influenced. They wanted to see that these heroes care about them and, and will take the time, even 90 seconds. That's enough. Now, okay, we're not just inspiring. That's the thing. That's inspirational and that's great. We're actually teaching with no sound. <laughs> Natalie is here and she's explaining to these kids what her goal pyramid is. She's showing them that to get an A, they have to work on their test, they have to homework, and then there's a daily, then there's a daily grind that she talks about here. Natalie's an Olympic weightlifter, and she's doing this from the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs. And this went out to her classrooms all over the country. Three or four, four, three or four classrooms per athlete. We wanted to make it very personal for the kids. We didn't want one athlete responsible for, for 20 or 25 schools. So, all right, great. There's a million, um, there's a million videos loaded to YouTube every, or sorry, 24 hours of video loaded every minute to YouTube. So, what does that mean? That means that these kids are actually watching this. This is what we got one week later. All right, she goes through, this is Leroy. Leroy's a, a third grader in Kansas City, Missouri. So, he wants to get 100% of his test. He knows he has to work on quizzes and homework, but here's the thing for me. Here's where it hits home is Natalie didn't tell him these things. Between the amazing teachers we have in the program, he's learning, he needs to sleep well, do his best, focus, get along, listen, eat well. Who would have, none of us would have said if we want to get 100% on our math test, those are the things we want to do. We're internalizing it. We're internalizing it with these kids and that's the most amazing, amazing thing to me. And then they're externalizing it. Here they're talking about what their goals are. There's, my goal is to be a professional football player. I wanted to be a football player too when I was a kid. Now, I'm not saying that kids don't know how to set goals. Right? Who here wanted to be a policeman or, or a baseball player or a football player when you're a kid? We know, the kids know how to set goals and they know how to dream big. I don't think we do a well enough job of showing them on a daily basis what it takes to get there. Now here's the thing. What else can be taught? Anything. Kindergartners in Oregon are learning to ask questions for the first time in their lives and making them informed questions. But here's the thing, they're doing it to their Paralympic wheelchair basketball player and asking her questions. First graders in Nebraska are writing the first letters of their entire lives and they're doing it to their silver medalist Olympic swimmer. And fifth graders in New York City are writing bar graphs after they research the hurdlers times and running averages. Now to me, when when I was a kid, this would have been the most amazing thing. And in less than two years, we're affecting 28 classrooms, almost 1,000 kids with over a dozen athletes. This is brand new, brand new. Now, to me, the, the, this, the power of the new Olympian, the power of the new lo hero, hero, role model, is, is something that we've never seen before. And I'm excited to see what the power of the new social Olympian is going to be. Now, we all don't have, not all of us have time to go to a school every day, or every month, or every year. But we all have 90 seconds to open up our laptop or take out our phone and make a video and make an impact, and possibly be that next hero in that community that needs you the most. Thank you so much.